A general election means one thing. It's your chance to decide who you want as your Member of Parliament. Hello and welcome. In this episode, I'm going to be focusing on Labour's six pledges, which the party launched about 10 days ago. Here is Keir Starmer introducing what Labour calls its first steps. So here we are. One card, six steps, in your hand, a plan to change the country. And these are our first steps. They enable us, if you like, to look the public in the eye and say, this is our down payment on change. The first and most important pledge is to deliver economic stability. This pledge is designed to reassure voters, but it's also a subtle nod to the economic calamity inflicted by the Conservative Party following Liz Truss's mini-budget. Here is Rachel Reeves introducing this pledge. Labour's first step on the economy will be to deliver economic stability with tough spending rules and a plan to grow our economy so that we can keep mortgages, inflation and taxes as low as possible. After the last 14 years of chaos and decline, stability is change. OK, so let's pause things there. The first part of Labour's pledge is essentially promising a tight set of fiscal rules to provide economic stability and, their hope, economic growth. These rules say that the party will not borrow for day-to-day spending and that they will have debt falling by the end of the parliament. This means that they can say to the electorate that they won't spend on anything without saying how they'll pay for it, lending them a sense of economic credibility. OK, let's continue with the clip. The stability that enables families to plan ahead and the stability for businesses to invest for the future. Alongside stability, to grow our economy, we need investment, with a new partnership between government and business. OK, so let's pause again. In this section, Reeves lets the cat out of the bag. The next Labour government will allow itself to borrow to invest during the Parliament, subject by the end of the Parliament to debt falling as a percentage of GDP. This has the potential to allow for a lot of needed investment in infrastructure, schools and hospitals, and depending on how widely they define investment, more could be added to the list. This being said, according to the IFS, the plans Labour are inheriting from the Conservatives on day-to-day spending mean that, as things stand, there will be significant cuts to unprotected departments, which means in short, the return of austerity under a Labour government. But there is no economic reason why this is necessary. It's a political choice that Labour are making during this election for political reasons that will constrain them in office and prevent them from achieving some important objectives. OK, let's continue. And alongside investment, we need reform of our economy. Reform with a new deal for working people. OK, let's pause again. Although trade union leaders such as Sharon Graham have criticised Labour for watering down their plans on workers' rights, this part remains the boldest part of Labour's policy agenda. The document that sets out their plans is 23 pages long and includes proposals to ban fire and rehire, end zero-hours contracts, give workers a basic set of rights from day one in a job and strengthens collective bargaining and the rights of trade union reps. Taken together, these proposals should make it easier for people to stand up for themselves in the workplace and should strengthen unions to bargain for higher wages and better working conditions for their members, something I would argue is absolutely essential in an era where real pay has been stagnant for over a decade and where workers' protections have been watered down to such an extent that workers have very few protections in their first two years in a job. OK, let's finish the clip. Reform so we can get Britain building again and reform to our skills system so that young people have the chance to get on in life and businesses have the skills that they need to grow their businesses. This is all part of our plan for a decade of national renewal. Plans that are fully costed, fully funded and plans to bring stability back so we can grow our economy. Well, I liked the up-tempo music, but it does feel like the Labour Party almost doesn't want us to be enthused about their plans. It's like their strategy is to present it with such an uninspiring offering that it will be impossible to be disappointed by what they deliver in government. We'll vote for them because we're so fed up of the Tories, and this might sustain them in office. But looking at the rest of their pledge card, what are they actually going to deliver in government? Cutting NHS waiting times from near record levels is exactly what Rishi Sunak pledged to do, and Labour's plan involves only 40,000 more appointments and no new money. Not enough, in my view, to put much of a dent in a waiting list of over 7 million. Pledges 3 and 5 are typical electioneering, just like Blair's pledge to be tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime. Starmer is positioning Labour as tough on national security, crime and the borders as a political strategy to interdict Labour from attack, but these pledges don't seem to amount to much. 
GB Energy and Labour's plan to nationalise rail are modest compared to Corbyn, and it's frustrating to me that Labour doesn't even dare to nationalise water or the rolling stock when it comes to rail, especially when the profiteering of the water companies has led to sewage being pumped into the sea and when some water bills, including my own, are set to almost double in the near future. Finally, Labour's plans to recruit 6,500 new teachers whilst welcome is so modest that it won't put a dent in what is needed in education. And if Labour fail to increase pay for teaching staff in England, I'm not sure how they plan to recruit these extra teachers as the profession is in the middle of a recruitment and retention crisis. I hate to sound so downbeat when there's some good things in Labour's plans. I guess it's just because the scale of the challenge facing an incoming Labour government is so huge and that these first steps aren't even the bare minimum we need. The only hope I really have is that they really do plan to turn on the taps when it comes to investment. Whether they do that remains to be seen. That's all for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheerio. Goodbye for now.